Good evening to those who listen. It's January 5th, 2023. It's 11.35 p.m. now. And I finished watching uh, Mike from Around the World on Paul Bagley. I just wanted to do a quick uh, video uh, summarizing everything that he was saying. Uh, if, from the other videos I did earlier, uh, we see that there was uh, some space weather going on. We had an X-class flare, X X1.1 flare, and there was something that, uh, I guess, a wave that's that went through the heliosphere, just like he predicted. How did he know this? I don't know. That's crazy. But he says this is one of 17 events that are going to come. Now, when I say events, I'm not so sure that all of them are going to be space or sun related, there might be some other events because he said one of them was a water event. But uh, I can go through all the stuff. I wrote down some notes. <clears throat> so a wave of energy just hit the sun, uh, X uh, 1.1 flare, and it already caused radio blackouts on the sunlit part of, on major portions of the sunlit side of the earth. And let me go ahead and show you some of the stuff. All right, now this is right here. Let me make sure it came through. Okay, it did. Right here is uh, NOAA, which is National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And they are one of the, the main things for space weather. So we had an alert watch warning. I mean, this is just... I consider a watch, I believe. So an X-ray event that exceeded X1, and it began on January 6th at uh, 0043, which would be midnight or 12.43 a.m. UTC time. So that's a five-hour difference for me. It depends on you know where you're at in the, in the world. And now it says X1.2. Uh, so it really happened about 7, I think it was 7 p.m. still on the 5th. So it's weird because he did say that it would happen on the 5th but not be confirmed until the 6th, which is weird. So somehow we got that right too. Uh, it's a strong R3 storm, but it's not considered a strong geostorm. So again, you know, some of the sunlit side of the earth had some radio blackouts of high frequency for about an hour so there's that um let me let me go back over here and i guess i gotta stop sharing share again so uh let me Something else going over here. Here was the sun images. Um, this is where I did the video on the faces. I've, it's changed now. If you look at this one, now we're at 3.07 UTC time, which was like three hours after, I think. No, it was like two hours after the, the picture I had, you know, of the faces on the sun and stuff. So they look a little different now. But you can still see like the face over here. You can still see the eyes starting to fade though, because it's going further to the, the right side over there. It still looks like a face here with an eye here, mouth down here, nose. This could be like a, a dragon or something. It comes around here, and then this would be the head. Some of these other images show them better. Which one is it? This one? No. This face you can see a little easier. I guess you can't see them as easy as. Hold on, let me find the. Yeah, they don't look as detailed as they were before. All right, so there's that one. Watches. 
All right, so let me go through some of the other stuff again. He says, uh, without our magnet, without our magnetosphere, without the magnetic shielding of the heliosphere, so not you know, not just the our uh, magnetosphere of Earth, but the magnet, there's have like a, a magnetic shielding of the heliosphere too. And if, I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't want to say, you know, I don't know a lot about the heliosphere, but it's supposed to be like nine million miles away, I guess which is weird. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything about it because you, you can look up uh, information on the heliosphere, but it's supposed to encompass like all the planets in our solar system. That without that magnetic shielding of the heliosphere, everything on Earth would die. If something happened to the heliosphere right now, this is what he said, within 24 hours, 50% of life would be dead. And within one week, 100% of, of life on Earth would be dead. So we really need that magnetic shielding of the heliosphere. He says, get ready for some earthquakes. There's going to be some earthquakes. Um, let me go back here. And we will do this and that. I haven't seen any earthquakes of significance yet. We've had, oh, we've had a couple now. Uh, the 4.8 in Japan, 5.1 in the South Sandwich Islands. And then there are some other smaller ones. So I'm guessing, you know, they're going to be bigger, but we'll check, keep an eye on that too. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, he's, he's saying, you know, with, with all this radiation coming through, because each time we have like events like this, uh, the radiation, the plasma is, is going to be getting going through the magnetosphere and it's going to get worse and worse. And then you're going to start noticing, and this is what he says, that uh, radiation sickness will increase. And he says it will be more of a radiation sickness that will be internal uh, and not so much on the skin. You know, when people think of radiation, uh, or, you know, like the, the sun, you know, you get like cancer of the skin, skin cancer. But he says it's going to be more internal. Now, here's what I came up with. And I got to be careful on my words here. Um, the, the radiation sickness. If uh, you look at the symptoms of COVID, it's the same exact symptoms as radiation sickness. Will it affect people that have already got the jab? That's a question I'm throwing out there. And um, since they are the same symptoms, is it possible that they could blame, uh, you know, radiation coming from space as the sickness because they're the same symptoms? What is if everybody's getting the radiation, but they're saying, oh, you really got that. And then they jack up those numbers or say, you know, oh, we're having a, another wave, you know, so I'm just, just throwing that out there. He says, don't forget about the lithium batteries. A long time ago, he's been warning that when these uh, radiation and stuff gets through the magnetosphere more, it's going to change the chemicals in the batteries, and then they will explode and catch on fire. So he's warning people not to have your phone in your pockets. You know, if you have uh, if your phone in your back pocket, you're going to have... Uh, you're going to have burns on your butt. And then if you have your front pocket, ooh, so keep that in mind. People will think, well, that's why I put, people will think they have the COVID when it's actually the radiation. Next page. Sunspots uh, will be earth-facing in a few days. On, uh, let me see if I can go back to over here, let me get this back and go like that and back again, share again. Let's get back to the sun image again. Oops, what happened? What did I do? Oh, it's there. Never mind. No, it's not. There we go. All right, so let's get back to the sun. Right over here on the side right now, there's a huge sunspot area that's going to be coming around in the next few days. Said by the weekend, it should be earth facing and it's big. I don't know if we can see it from this. 
So over here, it's a big area, not just a dot, but it's a big area. And it's coming around that could cause some problems. And again, we'll have to wait and see. So let's see what else. It says uh, there's going to be a lot of radiation coming through the magnetosphere, and it's going to affect certain areas more than other areas. And he says when you see air traffic change, so flights, airline flights changing their uh, their uh, flight patterns, you know, where they don't go into certain areas anymore, that will be a sign. He says take note of, of those areas. Uh, when air traffic stops in those areas, those areas have more radiation. And they said they will create like a no-fly, you know, no-fly zones. Not as, you know, not like military, but, you know, they'll have no-fly zones for the airlines to go past, go through, because it'll be so much radiation coming through, it'll be, it will be dangerous. There will be cancellations of flights and diverting of flights. And he said to avoid those areas. He said there was already, this has already happened in the past. There were four areas of the United States where there were no flights. And I think he was talking about just recently with with all the airlines, with the crazy uh, weather where all the flights were canceled. South, Southwest Airlines is going to go, I got a little thing on it. Again. And share. Oops, it's right there, and bam, let's share this one. The Senate is going to investigate Southwest Airlines' holiday travel fiasco. And, you know, I won't go into it too much. Oh, what happened? What happened? It's not supposed to be there. Uh, so they're going to hold hearings because... In the broadcast, uh, Mike from around the world was saying that they did this on purpose. So there's that too. And hopefully I can remember to put uh, Paul Begley's. I don't know if I can do it over here. Let's see. It's not letting me do it. Why can't I put chat in here? Add a destination. What do you mean add a destination? I'm not going on a flight. All right. Anyway, I'll just move on, and then I'll put the link in, link in the description afterwards so you can watch uh, Mike from around the world. Uh, I would say probably go past an hour of the beginning, maybe even a little longer, and you know to find where Mike from around the world calls in. He said internet was already altered on Wednesday, January 4th. He says the effects of this pulse will last up to a week. So he says there'll still be um, weird stuff happening, maybe earthquakes, some crazy weather that could happen in the next week. He said pay attention to this next week to see you know, some weird changes with the earth and the sun. Watch the sun and earth changes. Phones, computers, electronics may be affected too. You see a lot of weird stuff. And here I'm not having problems with my phone lately, but I don't think it was this thing that caused it. He said, by the end of 2023, we won't have the comforts we have now. He said, red dust, water event, fires are all coming. Atmospheric issues will double. 15, there's already 15 weather terms that were made up recently to explain the extreme weather. California will have multiple flooding events. Well, we've already we're already seeing that now. East Coast, he says, will also be inundated by rain and flooding. Uh, he says this pulse will suck hydrogen out of the sun, so th the sun will maybe look different from these from these changes. Um, he's saying in the future there might be another one of you know these events that happen, but one of these. Uh, Plasma discharges or whatever uh, flares might have a opposite polarity, and that would cause a small Carrington event in a small area. So if that happened, you know, there's going to be power outages and stuff like that. And he says it's in this pulse wave. So I guess in the next week, 
watch to see if a, a country, an area, a uh, part of the world that has a, a, a blackout. He says he's got to check the, uh, the particle counts from this uh, event that's happening now to see how bad it really is and, and how bad it could be in the future, too, depending on how bad it, you know, messes with our magnetosphere. He says, in the future, we will not escape a meteor storm. It will be like hail. And that reminded me of my dream I had where there was a bunch of hail falling, but they were like eggs. It was weird. I don't know. Uh, he says, insurance companies will not be able to cover floods and fires as much as they were. Some places will have floods where the waters won't, where the waters don't go away. He says there'll be places where there will be water, where there normally isn't water, and then it'll be dry where there normally is water. He says this is the eighth sub-cycle of a bigger cycle. Meters will slam into the earth. The sky will turn dark for a number of years. And he says this has happened in the past where the same type of things have happened where even 10 years of darkness in the sky and another time where there was 13 years. I didn't write that part down, but I remembered it. So uh, he says this is the first of 17 events. Water event is one. Uh, an impact of a meteor in the ocean is another. He thinks it's going to hit the ocean. Not positive on that. So not sure how many events are from space and sun. I had to put that in there because I thought that there was going to be 17 events and they thought they were all from the sun or from these uh, waves of energy or, or pulses or whatever. So some of them aren't. So I have to clarify that. because so I always thought it was just there's going to be 17 space events. Uh, he says, watch what comes out of the country of Is next week. Mideast is realigning. Things are being drafted against the country of Is. Not a bluff. It's going to turn into policy quickly. The U.S. will not stand by Israel like we expect. Uh, it won't seem like anyone can do anything about this. It says, keep your eyes on the UAE, United Arab Emirates, and Jordan. He doesn't trust Jordan. He says, when everybody goes home to their own countries, to their own beliefs, everyone will be against the country of Is. People won't like the new policies that are coming in. And then he said, look for chemical fires in the next week. This is what he said before he left. He said, in the next week, look for chemical fires. He thinks that these chemical fires will be uh, ignited from the radiation and this uh, wave of energy that's coming through now. And he says, 15 hours heightened reactions from this event. Or in 15 hours? Starting in 15 hours, I think he said. I'm not sure. 15 hours heightened reactions from this event. I don't know if that means now. I would think that's what it means. 15, obviously, sometimes when I write my notes, I'm trying to write them quick, and I don't explain myself enough. 15 hours heightened reactions from this event. I don't know if that means starting from now for 15 hours or 15 hours from now. It might mean 15 hours from now or from, you know, a couple hours ago. So 12 hours from now or something. I don't know. So there's what I have uh, from what I wrote down for notes. Jeez, this is longer than I thought. All right. Sorry I didn't want to make this long, but I wanted to kind of explain what was going on. I mean, there's a lot of people that, you know, doubt this guy. And, you know, I'm just saying take everything with a grain of salt. Do your research. Pray for discernment on all of this stuff. I'm not saying, you know, oh, believe this guy. He knows everything and he's, you know, whatever, a prophet or whatever. No, just, uh, you know, whatever you watch, you know, always research and always pray for discernment. <clears throat> so I guess that's it. Um, but I guess he really was right on this, that there was this an event. And we're going to hear more later on today well you know later on the 6th i'll say january 6th because we're now it's not quite the sixth five more minutes so we'll see more stuff and supposedly we're going to see a change in the sun there and they're going to the news i guess is going to start reporting all this stuff because 
it's something that they can't hide. So everybody's good at all. All right. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. God bless.